can we generate electricity from the magnetic field of Earth? Well, if we could, then someone would be doing it, so probably no. That's what I thought anyway. Indeed, that's what everyone thought until last week, when a team of physicists proved that, yes, you can generate electricity from Earth's magnetic field. Mind blown. You can use an electric current to move a magnet. This is how electric motors work. The reverse is also true. You can generate an electric current by moving a conductor in a magnetic field. It's called induction. They also use induction in philosophy, but there it generates arguments. However, to get an electric current, the magnetic field needs to change. And we rotate with Earth. There is no relative motion between us and the magnetic field, no induction, no current. So at first sight, it seems that you can't generate electricity from Earth's magnetic field. But in the early 20th century, physicists figured out that actually part of Earth's magnetic field doesn't rotate with the planet. It's what physicists call the primary dipole moment, and it's the thing that you usually see drawn in figures. That means as the Earth turns, we do move through part of the magnetic field, which makes you think, hang on, shouldn't this induce a current? Yes, but no. This sort of magnetic field doesn't change the right way. It'll rearrange electrons in a conductor very, very slightly, but that just builds up a small internal electric field whose force exactly balances the magnetic one. You can't create a circuit from it. Faraday already looked at this type of magnetic field 200 years ago and declared the matter settled. Nope no current. But in 2016, a group of physicists said it's possible after all. They claimed there's a loophole in Faraday's argument. It's only true for certain configurations of conductors. Concretely, Faraday looked at a solid cylinder, so basically a wire. And in a wire, you get no current. So Faraday said, end of story. But these researchers now said, that isn't true if you look at a hollow cylinder. Just mathematically, it violates one of the assumptions in Faraday's argument. I remember hearing about this in 2016, and it was just hugely controversial. In 2017, another group went and looked for the effect and didn't find it. But the guys who claimed it's possible said that the disprovers didn't do it right. The cylinder was too short, not oriented properly, and the measurements weren't careful enough, etc., etc. And so now, now they set out to measure it themselves. They took a hollow cylinder that's actually more of a pipe, 30 centimeters long and about a centimeter in diameter. They very carefully shielded it and did all kinds of measurements. They ruled out thermoelectric effects and ambient noise and contamination from other magnetic fields, and they found a small but steady voltage and current in the very direction and magnitude their theory predicted. They also did a bunch of sanity checks, for example, repeating the measurement in a completely different place and changing the orientation to see that the direction of the current flips. And you know what? This looks quite convincing to me. The voltage which they reported was around 17 microvolts and the current was about 25 nanoampere. Multiply these and you get a power output of roughly 4 times 10 to the minus 13 watts. That's very little. Then again, that is only a proof of principle, so maybe they can scale it up. In their paper, they write, the next step would be for an independent group to reproduce or contradict our results under experimental conditions closely similar to those used here. If our results were corroborated, then the path would be open to investigate whether this effect could be scaled to produce useful electrical power. And yes, if those find are confirmed, it should be possible to scale this up, up to a point. Making the device larger would increase the power somewhat, but eventually the magnetic field of Earth would just be too small to noticeably move any electrons. That's what I think anyway. I suspect that they won't get beyond a nanowatt or so. That doesn't mean it's useless. 
it'll just take a billion years to charge your phone. More seriously, it could come in useful for all sorts of tiny sensors and transmitters. For example, if they're embedded in walls, devices that do one operation per hour or per day, even nanowatts could be sufficient for that. It's not going to change the world, but it changes how we understand the world. Faraday didn't believe it, Maxwell never mentioned it, and yet here it is, the world's laziest power source. I'm always looking for product offers that you might find useful, and today I have one that I really wish I'd known about earlier. It's a PDF editor called UPDF that comes at about one-sixth the cost of Adobe, and it's so convenient. UPDF lets you edit any PDF pretty much like you'd edit a Word document, like you see here. Just click on it and type away. You can also convert different formats into each other. For example, you can save it as a Word document. And of course, UPDF has AI support, so you can ask it to summarize a document or ask questions about it or compare had different documents. It's really super useful. But wait, that isn't all. A single license can be used on four devices. Just the right thing for people like me who switch between laptop and phone and the thing with the big screen. It's like that software was made for me. Honestly, I didn't know anything about UPDF until a month ago, but it's eliminated a lot of pain from my life. Pain that starts with A and ends on Dobie. If you know what I'm talking about, give this a try. You can use UPDF for free, but that'll leave watermarks on edits and quotas on queries and exports and so on. Which is why I have a special offer for the pro version. You just need to use the link below to get a discount. So go and check this out. I can really recommend it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.